Welcome back again to the Nightmare Journal. And boy, do I have a treat for you, depending on whether or not you enjoy it, which you will enjoy it. Now, this is a nightmare I've had shortly after the Carousel Elephant one. Like, like a few days afterwards, for some reason in that one year, 2017, I was having a bunch of nightmares that would just wake me up in the middle of my sleep. Couldn't tell you why, couldn't tell you how. Couldn't tell you what was happening. Great googly moogly. But this one was a bit different. So sometimes, you know how dreams would just change out of nowhere? How they just go from one thing to the other with like no rhyme or reason, they just like that. This is kind of what happened, except it, it's like it had a transition to it. So inside this dream, I remember I was playing a Dark Souls styled game. I think it was more like Bloodborne actually, uh, because I actually have Bloodborne. I do have Bloodborne. And I remember I'm sitting there on the ground and I'm going ahead and watching the TV as I'm playing Bloodborne, or this Bloodborne styled game. I'm not sure if it exactly was Bloodborne or just based on it because it featured a location I had never seen. The location itself seemed like a crumbled utopia under underground. It was like this big open cavern of just this civilization that was once on a big flat platform that collapsed in on itself into the water below, and only some of it still stands. Absolutely a magical looking place. It, it looked, it didn't look beautiful. It, how, do I, how do I put this? It was the epitome of dark beauty. That's how I would describe that place. It was decrepit, it fell apart. It was a utopia that's no longer a utopia, but a part of it still looked magical because of the, the fact that it was inside a big cavern, the fact that it was so big and expansive, the glistening water down below. It just felt otherworldly. And then all of a sudden, while playing this game, I'm this character that has a huge, giant sword. It was like a blue gold sword with any time a slash came around, water would emit from it. There were these big, bulbous, armored enemies. They looked like their armor were bubbles, almost. Uh, and they were just fumbling around. They didn't look like they were human anymore. They looked like they could have been human at some point. And I remember slashing through those enemies. For some reason, my point of view went from watching the game as I played it to now being the protagonist. It's like my eyes just swapped perspective. Now I'm literally in the game, but I don't register it as me being in the game. I register it as now being in this world. Like somehow it was like a portal. So I'm walking around trying to figure out what to do. I'm, I have no experience in combat, so I'm just trying to use this big giant sword to the best of my abilities, right? But, of course, like I said, this utopia had collapsed in on itself. So, the farther back you are inside the cavern area, you're closer to ground. It seems like the cave kind of spreads out, and the farther you spread out, the more the water takes in. The farther out you go to when it spreads out, that's when the utopia starts becoming a bit more unstable, because that's where it collapsed. The part where it collapsed is getting closer and closer to the walls. And I get to that point and I see, hey look, there's a point where I can just turn around, there's probably more to it, there's like a little cliff, if I can make it, and whoop, there I go, I slip, I fall. And I'm under the water. Despite how close it looked like it was to the ground, there was nothing. It was just dark blue everywhere. I'm looking around, there's nothing. There's nothing when you look down, there's nothing when you look up, there's nothing when you look side to side. Just pretty much a big blue void underwater, and I see something in the distance. It looks like a humanoid lick figure, but with no legs. Have you ever heard of the Ningen? The Ningen is sort of a cryptid that is sort of like this humanoid like figure. They're kind of like a mermaid, I guess, but they're meant to be huge. They're much bigger. They're meant to be humanoid in appearance. They have these giant webbed hands. They got big arms, they got a torso, and they get a head that looks like it kind of has a humanoid face on it. But they don't have any legs, and they don't have the rest of the torso. They're sort of this cryptid and urban legend that you could easily just look up. They're, I, I think they're a neat concept, I like them, but essentially, imagine this thing in the distance. And it has like dreadlocks. Dreadlocks that look like they're from the movie Tarzan. You know what I'm talking about, Tarzan has like those dreadlocks that don't really look like they're braided, they just look like big, long uh, bits of hair. Imagine that. So I'm looking at this thing and thinking like, well that's fine, it's not that big. Then it clicks in me. It's not that it's small, it's just really far away. And as soon as I realize this, this thing gets lightning speed and whoosh, comes right to me, grabs me with its giant hand, 
and looks like it's about to eat me. It has no teeth. It just opens its gob, its triangular looking mouth. There's no teeth, no tongue, no nothing. And so I get this big ass sword that I have and I try in vain to stab its mouth. But of course it's not affecting it. It's just dragging me in. More and more. And by the time I get to its mouth, I'm awake again. The same thing happened with the merry-go-round dream where I just jolt myself awake. And once again, yes, I did slip the lights on. Judge me, I don't care. You try having these weird-ass fucking surreal nightmares. I'm sure a lot of you probably actually have experience in that, but... Shut up! I don't know what was with me and having these kind of nightmares that would jolt me awake. Couldn't tell you. Uh, I'll give you a little bonus nightmare because it does relate to the topic. So I did have another dream, and the reason I'm bringing this one up is because it's incredibly short, and it does relate to the fact of, like, jolting me awake. I've mentioned in the episode before that there was a point where I jolt myself awake screaming, but that wasn't from a scary nightmare. I never got to explain it, and since this one is really short, I figured I might as well. So I don't remember all the details in this dream. In this dream... I was living in one house and my mom was living in another house across the street. We've never been in these houses before, but we're on the balconies of these houses. They're literally across from each other on the street. We're screaming and yelling at one another. For some reason, we're having a heated argument about something. And my mom would not listen to me in this dream. So I was, so we were screaming at one another. And at one point, I just yelled this out. I just yelled something else and... I swear to God, I yelled, shut the fuck up. But, here's the weird thing. When I yelled that, I woke up at the exact moment I started yelling that. So, I literally got up from bed yelling that. So, it was literally just like this. Shut the fuck up! And here, there goes my poor dog running out of my room. And I'm thinking I'm a crazy person right now. <laughs> so, here's the thing. I did call my mom. And I was just like, is that normal? Screaming shut the fuck up when I wake up from a dream <laughs> and she's like yeah, it's normal <laughs> I felt like a crazy person it never happened before I felt insane <laughs> But anyway, my roommates are back so let's go ahead and end the video right here. We were going to anyway So that's everything for this episode. Hope y'all have a beautiful day and I hope it gets even better your connection will be strange <laughs>